Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Middle East Teaching and Learning Conference. My name is Masra Sheikh. I'm an educational psychologist, a career counselor, and a provider for EdTech Learning Solutions. I'm joining you from al Ahlam Training in Higher Education Services in Oman. My presentation today is about EdTech as a route to equality for special needs learners. As an educational psychologist, my work mainly is around children with special learning needs, their diagnosis and intervention. As a provider for learning solutions, I bring EdTech programs uh, for special needs learners. In this presentation, I will give you an overview of what EdTech solutions are available for SEN learners. And I'd like to share uh, my experience through this and give you a glimpse of different programs that I use uh, and programs that are designed to sustain inclusion. At the end of my presentation, if you have any questions, please connect with me. I'm available on the Q&A section of the platform, and I will respond to all your questions over there. Now, in every classroom, there are children who learn in different ways and have contrasting educational needs. Schools do aim for inclusion generally. What we need uh, most of the times is the right tools to enhance inclusive learning. Tools that are designed to engage students while at the same time offering that extra support and features that encourage all learners to stay motivated. So as a learning solutions provider, that's where my expertise is, that is to introduce the right educational technology and to find the program that is right fit for different learners. Other than academic challenges, uh, SEN learners do have several academic challenges, but beyond that, they have other challenges as well. So they may have problems, say, with executive functioning or working memory or behavioral and emotional challenges. Now, we do have plenty of conventional methods of supporting students academically. However, there are challenges involved sometimes that are extremely difficult to help students uh, make that progress. So even if uh, we are using all the possible uh, intervention that's available, sometimes we are just not making any progress is because of these challenges which are connected to the working memory or the executive function or the attention span of the child. So, for example, if I have my student with dyslexia who is receiving learning support thrice a week, the major problem why I'm not making sufficient progress is because of the low retention of the student and also because he has difficulties with attention span. So if they are not making progress, then their learning gaps are only going to grow, making it harder for inclusion to work. Now, research shows that with students with disabilities, if they do receive proper support, up to 90% of them are capable of graduating from high school and are ready to continue on to college or the workforce. So all we have to do is give that right support. So with conventional methods, we do have support, but when it goes beyond academics, that's where intervention does not make progress. And this is where EdTech comes into picture because of several reasons, and I'll share with you why. So why EdTech basically? We have started seeing compelling evidence that well-designed technology can make a significant difference to learners' outcome. An example of that is one of my dyslexic students when I asked him what he wants to be, what does he wants to do? And he mentioned that maybe uh, he could become a carpenter. because That's where he was seeing himself with all his learning problems. But when trained 
to use assistive technology programs, simple program that could help him read text aloud or help him visualize, organize his ideas and convert them to text. And right now that student is studying a civil engineering program at the university. So this is the carpenter to engineer story made possible. And we could do that. We could really do that with millions of students if we fully understand how to use these tools. And that's the major benefit of EdTech. Another important point uh, for um, educators especially is like individuals with dyslexia are usually apprehensive in the classroom. They feel uncomfortable in a classroom setting where they're reading and language skills are challenged on a daily basis. So as an educator, it can be difficult to fully integrate an effective teaching style. That's where, again, technology has a very important role to play and becomes vastly important here, even for educators. Another benefit of technology that I uh, see is experiential learning. Now, while experiential learning has always been a teaching method and a very important uh, method, especially for SEN learners, as an educator, it allows me uh, to shift lessons from abstract concepts to practical experiences that can help students better understand and retain information. So virtual reality, AR technologies provide unlimited immersive learning opportunities, removing the constraints of time and geography, bringing students into contact with the environment uh, they otherwise wouldn't have access to. So I would say VR and AR technologies um, also help students develop their communication skills, their critical thinking abilities, uh, absorbing information faster and foster that uh, creativity and collaboration. So these are some of the major benefits of EdTech that I see for SEN learners. And in the next slide, I'm just going to begin with a, uh, with a very, very simple um, assistive technology tool that uh, can make so much of a difference. And you will see. So this is assistive technology, uh, Crossville 3000, which I use for my students. Now, this is an amazing uh, study tool that provides help uh, both for educators as well as learners of any age. Um, to feel empowered to succeed uh, academically. So here, if you see, there are several options. It has, you know, once you open a text like this uh, into the program, there is an option to read aloud, um, an option that converts speech to text for the students. So when they dictate, the program writes for them. It changes the font. There's also a dyslexic font on, on the program so that students with dyslexia find it easier to read. Then there is this background uh, mode that can help students to change the mode. If you see on this side, that's a darker mode. And then there are several other options such as it provides a dictionary, a picture dictionary, a visual organizing tool, or other visual aids such as highlighters, markers, uh, study notes that can be, you know, as the student is reading through the text, can they can take notes and later extract those notes. It also supports the educators that it offers test taking options for students that can be accessed on any device. So it is suitable um, also for students with vision disabilities or hearing problems. So even though it is a simple tool, a, a very, very simple program, it makes a world of difference for students who struggle with this simple uh, things such as reading or writing. 
tasks, um, and it gives students the ability to work independently. So this is just one of the examples. Some of these very simple tools are also built in on uh, as features on Windows 11 as accessibility features. So Windows offer you know, a different accessibility features for people uh, with vision disability, such as it offers darker theme, contrast theme, and options for narrator uh, for uh, students with hearing problems, it gives captions to read spoken words, different kind of audio options for partial hearing loss, or mobility problems um, where there are eye controlled windows offered or your eye tracking hardwares are available, or for students with neurodiversity such as learning problems, Microsoft Edge also offers this uh, immersive uh, readers to improve reading comprehension and fluency. So these are like very, very simple tools, but incredibly powerful uh, when available to support students. So I'd say that uh, the only thing is uh, the finest resources and the finest technology in the world uh, simply cannot be effective if students cannot access them. So the only thing we have to focus more on is how to make these tools more accessible for our learners. Okay. Now, other than the simple assistive technology tool, which I just showed you, uh, there are different ed tech programs, which are uh, more complex and meet complex needs of students as well. So, and these are specifically designed for SEN learners to help them improve their learning and academics. So such as, you know, there are language programs, there are math programs, there are cognitive training programs, and the list is long. I will give you an insight about some of them, uh, but the important part is to select the right program that are well researched and backed by neuroscience. And the programs do have a solid research backing. Those kind of programs do accelerate learning for students. So for example, if I have a student with ADHD who is receiving support for academic areas, but has other challenges such as attention span, of course, working memory, speed of learning. So as an educator, I feel handicapped. How do I change those problems and help the student? So I use a cognitive training program always in combination with the academic program. So that way, uh, I'm trying and giving a more holistic intervention. So my next slide, I'm going to give you um, an idea about a cognitive training program, which I use. I'm going to show you one of those programs and how it helps basically. So let's have a look at the program first and then I'll explain what this is. This program is called Cogmed and there are different exercises on it, which you will see. Uh, some are auditory exercises and some are visual exercises. Three, eight, six, three. Two. 
yeah. So this is basically uh, Cogmed. Uh, what Cogmed does is it's working uh, to improve the attention span, the working memory. It's basically a working memory training program. So here, as you saw, some of the exercises where the student does is visual. They have to visually try and remember uh, the objects or the circles that are moving, or they have to remember the digits that they hear. So that's auditory memory. So here the student has to remember visual and auditory information. The program stretches their working memory, auditory memory, and attention span. So it is just like, it works just like a gym where the student um, uh, practices different exercises to build their muscles. And we know brain is a muscle it can change. And that is called the neuroplasticity or our brain we say is plastic and it can change with practice. So when we stimulate the brain uh, with every exercise, we are stretching that muscle. So with my ADHD student, when I combine academic intervention with a cognitive training like this, I'm providing holistic intervention that is i'm intervening at the core uh, i have covered the the basic core cognitive uh, difficulties that they may have of attention concentration processing speed with the training program like this and then i cover that up with the academic areas that is with reading writing or whatever other help the student might need so that becomes holistic and when it becomes holistic then that way i am making progress faster um, with my students. So that's one of the programs that I use uh, with my students. Now, another example um, is a program that provides, again, holistic intervention in the sense that it has a built-in cognitive program as well as an academic program uh, that provides complete intervention. So I'm going to show you what a program like that would look like. However, uh, listen to this scenario first. If, for example, if I'm teaching a dyslexic student, um, all my intervention initially is going to target on teaching reading, spelling, language skills. However, the executive functions of the student really, again, stall my intervention. So if student cannot uh, retain information or has very slow processing speed or attention span. Um, and research shows that students with different learning disabilities usually have overlapping problems with each other. So for example, ADHD overlaps dyslexia by 30% in majority of the cases or vice versa. So now if I have an ed tech program that holistically targets students' academic areas as well as executive functions, then that accelerates the progress for the student. And on my next slide, I'm going to give you a example of one of the programs that I use, which is called uh, Fast Forward. So this is the program. Um, one of the exercises on the program, which is called Fast Forward. And I use this program for teaching sight words with the students. So I'm going to play the video and just show you what the program looks like. And then I'll explain to you how it's targeting the executive functions, as well as it's teaching the academic skill of reading to the student. Word. Have. Or from one word this but or one had by this okay so as you see here when the student is working on this program uh, they are working 
on the sight words. So this is where, when, when the words are basically moving through the screen, here the student has to constantly pay attention to the word uh, that they have to target. Uh, so what it does is basically not only teaching them sight words, but it's teaching them to pay attention and focus constantly. They have to respond quickly that's targeting their processing speed and at the same time they are learning sight words so here i'm working with the core cognitive skills uh, that is stretching the attention span helping them to process information faster and when we work on the program every day it becomes like a uh, like a mental exercise an uh, exercise for the brain to stretch attention to process information faster and at the same time learn the language skills so this is why this is how a program is built with the cognitive skills as well as targeting the academic intervention. So this is the biggest advantage of, of a program like this, um, of specifically at tech, I would say. Some of the other benefits of program is that it moves at student space, giving them n number of trials. Uh, to the students, it is engaging it is not passive learning because they are constantly responding to each stimuli that they see then student has to respond and then that becomes interactive it's very well you know um uh, designed uh it's very motivating the interference of the the program uh they get students get bonus points they get they get to see their progress so i see all of that as playing uh, a part in students' uh, learning. Now, because also technology is so visually based and usually children with SEM uh, are often, often uh, visual special learners and they are usually comfortable in front of a computer. So all we need here is to find the right program designed for them. So yeah, this is how it helps. Um, the other advantage of EdTech is because it's game-like. EdTech programs are successful and engaging because of game-based technology. It has been a great, I would say, a great way to get everyone involved with the popularity of video games, our students are just tuned to absorb them. And uh, so using them into educational purpose has only benefited um, in making them more engaging and interactive. Now, many students have grown up playing video games and that involves tasks, levels, challenges, and immediate feedback. So for this generation, I think it is a natural way to engage them. We can tap into their enjoyment uh, that children get from these games by using educational technology tools that turn learning into play to make it easier for students to grasp concepts and help them become more active learners. So with my experience, I can tell you that gamification makes learning exciting for students, uh, delivering activity in a variety of subjects, providing a sense of progress with rewards or points or completion tasks. Now, I'm just going to show you uh, one of the reading programs that I that I use, um, and that has this interactive element and uh, video game inspired achievements, including badges for students who finish their reading task and rewards for completing their reading assignments. So just have a look and then I'll explain uh, what the program is. So this program is called uh, a reading assistant. Um, this is uh, a program that I use with my students to practice reading and it gives them a chance to listen to books, pick up the books, it's basically a library. And uh, once you see the video, you will have a bit more idea as to how it works. Welcome to Reading Assistant your personal reading coach. Get ready to record your own voice reading stories, articles, poems, songs, and even jokes. Here's how it works. In your library, click on the cover or the go button to open your reading selection. The world's biggest waves, 
written by Catherine Follett. Click on the Start button to begin. Let's check this one out. Before you begin reading, let's practice some of the new vocabulary you are going to see as you read today. Click each word to hear it read aloud and see the definition. Tsunami, a large wave caused by an underwater eruption or earthquake. Then click the orange speaker to practice reading the word yourself. Repeat after me. Tsunami. Tsunami. After completing all the vocabulary words, you are ready for step one. Step one, preview and read on my own. In step one, read through the entire selection silently and look at the pictures. Or you can have it read to you by clicking on the Read to Me button. Okay, so this program, um, basically what it does is provide different steps to students. Once they have picked up the book, uh, the students can either hear uh, the book first and then practice their reading, practice their words and vocabulary, record themselves uh, reading hear their own recording, improve their comprehension at step three where they answer questions uh, about the text. So this gives students three trials on the same text to learn and practice every word. And then in the end shows them their reward points. They, they receive a gold badge for completing each book um, and they win that. And after finishing uh, every book and the number of words they have mastered, they get to see their report. They get to see their progress report, their points, their bonus points, the badges that they have collected. So that becomes very uh, motivating for students to complete each book because at the end, they would like to see their badges. They would like to see the points that they have got. They like to see how many words they they read correct you know what was their pace of reading so just that report at the end that reward and that you know a very visual um way of seeing where you're headed makes student motivated to complete the book and i have been i could say successfully taught uh, children to read using this just this one program even severely dyslexic children um, to read with this uh, program and uh, I would say that the program becomes very personalized to meet students diverse needs and uh, this is why I think it's 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 successfully teaching uh, children to read okay uh, Yeah, so next important part is um, SEL. Now this is something that I see again as a major benefit of technology, though we say uh, social emotional learning is more with the human touch and that is absolutely true. But it is now <clears throat> clear that the success of our students is not just in one factor, but students with disabilities in more inclusive settings, uh, you know, depending on meeting their academic needs and social emotional needs is really important. Does in turn, it requires a school climate uh, that is psychologically inclusive, um, where all students better understand one another, feel safe and supported, uh, have positive relationships and are more respectful and accepting of each other. But going beyond that, uh, beyond that, when we come to individual students and when we are intervening with especially with SEN students and trying to meet their SEN uh, needs, uh, I see again EdTech has a very important role to play. The intervention that we give has a very important role to play in their social emotional learning. When I start using programs uh, with my students, uh, any of these programs, EdTech programs, the first change that I notice in, in my students is, is the change in their self-esteem. Uh, they start seeing themselves differently it builds their confidence because it starts at their level, adapts at student's pace without making the student feel ashamed of making mistakes, gives 
n number of reputations, absolutely non-judgmental. And I cannot imagine doing that. I cannot imagine doing that as a human uh, because when I'm teaching uh, my students with SEM, no matter, no matter what my patience level is, my frustration will show up somewhere, somewhere, either in my voice, it may be very unintentional, very unintentional, but it may show up in my voice, in my body language, and no matter how hard I try, uh, I just might not be able to contain it. Um, and that affects the self-esteem, that affects the interest, the motivation of the learner. So if you just remove that human factor here, putting the child at ease by letting them interact with the computer. And I'm going to show you an example of that um, on my next slide, but just the language of the computer, the way it's non-judgmental, the way that because just because it's a machine and you know students are not scared to make mistakes uh, with the machine, uh, just helps, just absolutely helps in building their self-esteem and confidence. And I see that as a major, major um, step towards learning, especially for SEN learners, because more than the learning problems, uh, children with uh, special learning needs suffer with SEL needs uh, because their social emotional learning is so far behind or because uh, they are emotionally, uh, I would say, so uh, it's so difficult for them emotionally to cope with all the challenges that they face that SEL becomes absolutely essential and a first step in any kind of intervention. And that's why um, EdTech has a role to play even in SEL. So I'm going to show you the next slide and have a look at the, at the video that I share with you and then we can talk. So this is one of the programs that I uh, use. It is one of the exercises uh, used for um, building cognitive um, exercise of auditory processing. So it teaches basically sound discrimination, um, encourages students to um, you know, pay attention to different sounds, discriminate between sounds, uh, essentially just preparing them uh, to learn phonics. So uh, let me just learn, uh, run the video for you and then we explain. Jimbo is ready for a workout. Improving your listening and thinking speed is hard work, but you can do it. Welcome. This is Sky Jim. To start, click go. Sky Gym builds listening. You listen for sounds. They sound like weep and whoop. Click up. Hear that? That was weep. That's another weep. And another weep. These sounds go up. For weep. Click up. Now let's hear whoop. Click down. Hear that? That was whoop. That's another whoop. And another whoop. These sounds go down. For whoop. Click down. Weeps and whoops. Can you hear the difference? To start, here is a clue. Watch the arrows. They light up. Click go to start. Okay, so what I'm trying to show here is uh, that the program, the kind of language it uses, the kind of encouraging language it uses, 
the way it looks because it's showing children their points, the bonus points that they're receiving, you know, uh, the motivation it gives by giving them those bonus points uh, where they have full control over as to how they are moving through the program. And it, if they are not able to do it, it gives them that uh, motivation to try again, listen again. So just the language of the program itself becomes encouraging, motivating, for the children to go on and try it. And even if they are making mistakes, there's always a second chance. So there's N number of trials. This is how it builds those SEL skills, which I said uh, is the most important factor for any SEL child, for any student uh, with different learning needs to progress. So that first step of SEL uh, is incorporated with it with a good program with a program that has this neuroscience backing okay so that's with uh my presentation um thank you uh so much for your attention using these assistive uh educational technologies educators can ensure that students have the academic skills the social development and the motivation to achieve academic success. Um, I see that EdTech tools surely give all students their best chance at success and build a strong foundation for the future. As our technology is advancing and digital tools are growing in efficacy and we can clearly uh, see a positive impact um, on all learners, not just SEN learners, but all children as they learn and express themselves in their own individual ways. I think here, uh, one thing is very clear, that is inclusion of all students is, is certainly um, a priority for policymakers and educators. And as teachers' uh, workloads continue to increase uh, with inclusion, I think EdTech has a very, very vital role to play in delivering that equality. So thanks again. Uh, I'm on the Q&A platform for your questions, any feedback, any comment, anything is more than welcome. If you would like to connect with me, my website address is here. You can always connect with me there. My website also has all the details of the programs that I used in this presentation as examples. And uh, you can go and have a look over there. All right, thank you and goodbye.